of guys. So I was throwing out the trash at my apartment complex and there's an area where people can dump off a bunch of stuff. And I went to go check it out and I saw this. So all this crap here, you know, sometimes I've, we've, I've taken some boards to make things with some pretty nice boards here, but then a freaking PC. It's got a power supply in it. I, yeah, we're definitely taking it. So I've opened it up and it doesn't even look half bad. It's got a, a, dry, a CD drive or something there couple cables, 500 watt power supply, even got a CPU in there. What the heck? This is a really crazy find. All right, got my blower here, so I'm gonna dust it down here and take it back up to my apartment. And we have it back at the 88-bit tech studio office. It's really just my apartment, but we're gonna go ahead and plug this in and see if it works. Apparently, it does have a CPU in there, an Intel Inside Core i3, um, and it's got a freaking CD drive as well. I wonder why they threw it out. Maybe it's a simple solution. We'll find out. Okay, guys, I got everything hooked up. Got the power cable, the CPU cable, the fans and everything. Uh, make sure all the all that's set up as well. Fortunately, I don't actually have a VGA cable. I just want to make sure it powers up before I stick a graphics card in here. No freaking way. It's powered on, guys. No wonder it didn't start. This wasn't even really on correctly, and the thermal paste is hella dry. But there is a, a, uh, a CPU in there. Just gonna do a bit of cleaning and see if I can get this better. Alright, we've cleaned up the CPU a bit. I don't know if you can see. We've got an i3 41. 4160 in there. Moved all the thermal paste. We've gave we've given the cooler some new life. Completely washed. Took out the heat sink. Cleaned out all the dust. So it's looks brand new. We'll go ahead and put that back on there with some fresh thermal paste, and hopefully this time it posts. Okay guys, so I finally got a graphics card to test out that dumpster PC I found. And I've got the power supply and everything hooked up. Got a Sonambulist uh, HDD. And I've got my HDMI plugged into the graphics card as well as a boot drive. And check it out. It works. Found a friggin' working PC in our apartment dump off point. I have too many projects going on right now, so this is definitely not an ideal setup. I'm running, this PC's been built and I'm just finishing benchmark test and a game test on it. This one's been built, but I'm waiting for a cooler to come in to replace this one since it's not good enough. Um, and this one I just wanted to see if it worked, but I've already started the setup process, so I might as well just finish it. She lives. We'll be back after these short messages. 
Alright guys, now that we know it works, I got a more appropriate graphics card for this dumpster PC. And this one, I gave it a bit of a cleaning and dusting. Uh, I could clean it some more, I've already tested the card, it works fine, temps are completely fine as well. Um, I might still give it a proper clean, but this is a GTX 1050 Ti Overclock Aero ITX Edition. So there's no power cord. This runs strictly from power source from the PCI Express slot, but should be more than enough to play some modern games, but mainly older games at some decent settings. It's a perfect combination for this i3-4160 dual-core processor, two-core, four-thread. Let's see how it goes. We've got it installed. It's up and running. Drivers are installed. It's got the latest NVIDIA drivers there. Oh, I've also given the case a complete teardown and clean up. So I wiped all the surfaces, uh, um, sprayed everything down with uh, the air duster, and even took off the motherboard, cleaned underneath it, cleaned the motherboard, cleaned the fans, cleaned even the wires themselves, and underneath the GPU. It is basically a refurbished unit at this point, but let's get into the tests. And I forgot to mention the most important part of this pickup uh, on the used market. I was able to get this for 32 US dollars. Not a bad deal for an MSI GTX 1050 Ti OC. Just a reminder of the specs as we get into the first test here. We have an MSI GTX 1050 Ti OC Aero ITX Edition running with a i3-4160 dual-core, two-core, two four-thread processor, 8 gigabytes of DDR3 at 133 megahertz in dual channel, so two sticks of four gigabytes. And keep in mind that I am recording this footage off of that computer, so it's kind of choppy, mainly because the CPU just doesn't handle uh, capturing video too well. However, I recorded the FPS uh, measurements without the game capture software running. So on average with Armored Core 6 we got on 1080p low settings 36 average FPS with a 1% low of 23 and a 0.1% low of 19. destroyed. This concludes F-Rank evaluation. Well done. Next game we have Counter-Strike 2 and gone are the days where Counter-Strike could be played on any potato PC at high frames. This game is a lot more difficult to run these days and we have it set to 1080p full screen 165 Hz. We're not going to hit that at all. But in the advanced settings, we've got custom, so essentially very low, or the lowest it can go. And we've set dynamic range to performance and fidelity FX super resolution to balanced. I did set textures too high just because on low it is really bad. But with this game, um, it being a competitive shooter, I mean, I'm playing against bots here. It is not an enjoyable experience. Um, with these settings, we averaged 45 FPS with a 1% low of 23 and a 0.1% low of 14. Definitely noticed some slowdowns as I went through this game, and uh, honestly, I would I would consider this unplayable for Counter Strike. Uh, if you're going to be playing it online, even on the lowest settings, you just it. It barely, it barely, it doesn't even get close to 60 FPS, so I would not be getting this game to play Counter-Strike 2. 
Uh, if it was still global offensive, for sure, I'm sure this could easily get over 100 FPS, but that is not the case anymore. So, yeah, on to the next game. Testing a proper AAA game for a bit of laughs, but also not, um, mainly because with the advent of new technologies, there are things that have come out that can provide life to even these older cards, mainly the FSR3 mod with frame generation. So for the settings here, we're on full screen at 1080p. We obviously don't have DLSS, but that's just FSR3 because of this mod. It's set to quality, frame gen on. Um, everything's set to low except for the level of detail. I've set it to medium just to give it a bit more detail. And check this out. We get pretty okay frames, and the game actually looks doesn't look too bad. We got an average of 53 FPS with a 1% low of 24 and a 0.1% low of 13. It actually wasn't half bad playing. Um, I could see myself, especially since this is non-competitive, offline, uh, single player game, I think it's more than acceptable. So for Fortnite, I really thought we'd break 100 FPS on the average. We didn't quite get there, but still a very respectable showing for this combination. Uh, we were The settings were set to 1080p, performance mode with high textures, and we got an average of 97 FPS, the 1% low of 17, and a 0.1% low of 6. Fortnite is more than playable, and I didn't even really notice those stutters when playing. It it felt quite smooth to me. Next up we have Forza Horizon 4 at uh, 1080p settings, uh, full screen mode, you can see we have it set to high settings overall, motion blur is turned off and we average 60 FPS with a 1% low of 32 and a 0.1% low of 23. So for the next few games here, we have some titles that pair extremely well with this combination of the i3-4160 and the GTX 1050 Ti. They are games that are honestly some of the best games I've ever played, so at 1080p max settings, we got 80 to 150 FPS on average. Uh, the 1% and 0.1% lows I didn't uh, record here just because there's a lot of cutscenes and when it transitions, it, it you're getting those drops uh, as it transitions into those cutscenes. So, yeah, on average, 80 to 150. You get you actually get you can actually get a high refresh rate experience on this game, which is pretty cool. Next up we have Skyrim Special Edition. So at 1080p ultra settings you can easily get a locked 60 FPS. However I unlocked the FPS in this game. So we averaged 75 FPS with 1% low of 60 and a 0.1% low of 47.
And last but not least, we have Subnautica at 1080p low with medium water quality. The game looks beautiful and it's super smooth and more than enjoyable on this system. We averaged 98 FPS with a 1% low of 49 and a 0.1% low of 12. So there you guys have it, the dumpster PC works and it can play modern games. But this is not what this PC is about. The way I see this PC is an awesome starter PC for a kid to tinker with. It has cheap upgrade options that will greatly enhance the performance of the PC. You can upgrade the CPU to an E3 1231V3 for 23 US doll hairs or 36 AUD. This would be a considerable upgrade over the little CPU that could, doubling it to 4 core, 8 threads, 3.4 GHz base to a boost clock of 3.8 GHz. And if you want to upgrade it even further, you could go with an i7-4790K with a base clock of 4 GHz and a whopping boost clock of 4.4 GHz. You could also upgrade the GPU to one that is powered, like the RX 588GB that I had in there before, or even a 1654GB, both of which can be found on the used market for very reasonable prices and would give you a statistically significant boost in FPS. I would also upgrade the DDR3 RAM to a 2x8GB, which would only cost $16 off AliExpress. You might even find cheaper deals locally on the used market. My last bit of upgrade recommendations would be to grab a proper brand name 1TB SATA SSD since, in my opinion, 1TB is really the minimum these days, but I also don't know how much I trust the Sonambulist SSD to last you. It made for a choppy experience on the PC when it was at 70% or so capacity. All up, I spent a grand total of 56 US dollars and a not significant amount of time cleaning the PC and its components from top to bottom to get a truly budget gaming PC. Oh, and I almost forgot the most important feature.